Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Sid Meier's Civilization V tutorial style. So again, we're going to give a lot of explanation about everything we do on every turn. We're also playing on a relatively low difficulty as well. I think I forgot to mention about zooming in and out. You can do that with your mouse wheel. Hopefully people have figured it out on their own at this point. So last turn we discovered Mount Kailash, and we were reminded that we were uh, trespassing in the lands of Brussels, but we're not doing that anymore. So let's go ahead and... Oh, we still need to move our warrior. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to skirt around Leventa to avoid upsetting them. And we've discovered another natural wonder. Now, this one is exceptionally good. King Solomon Mines produces six production if you work it. Keep in mind that right now in, say, London here, the best we're getting is like one hammer out of this uh, this quarry or but this stone tile. Once we improve it with the quarry, we'll get slightly more. But nowhere close to six. That's really good. Unfortunately... Unfortunately for us, anyway, it is adjacent to Laventa, which means Laventa will probably claim that tile relatively soon, and so we will not be able to possess King Solomon's mines. Unless, of course, we go to war with Laventa and take their stuff. Which is an option, but probably not one we'll pursue. So we're going to try to speed through these turns a little bit more now. Ah! And we've discovered our first barbarian encampment. So... Barbarian units are units that are not controlled by any civilization or city-state. In fact, they're permanently at war with all of those people. And they live in these little camps. These camps will spawn a new barbarian unit, create a new barbarian unit every few turns until it's been cleared out. How would we do that? We could clear out this barbarian camp by killing the brute that's on top of it. And then as long as we step into this tile, it will clear out the camp, which will give us a reward of gold and also prevent barbarians from from being created in this area over here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move my scout next to this camp. Most likely this brute will not attack me. Usually they don't attack out of a camp, but it depends. It's certainly far from a, um, uh, a sure thing. If they do attack me, it actually won't be so bad. But if another barbarian happens to be created here while my scout is around, I'll actually be in a little bit of trouble. It's also unfortunate that, that is near an area where I might want to settle, especially for Mount Kailash, so uh, we may have to clear that out. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep scouting around with my warrior over here. Now, I can't step onto the mines. Um, n natural wonders basically count like mountains, and mountains cannot be crossed by land units, so we can't actually step over here, so we'll just step forward a little bit more. What I'll probably do next turn is step onto this hill to see if what what might be off the coast. Uh, come back over here, maybe reveal a few more tiles to the north. And then I think my warrior will actually move over here. And maybe the warrior plus the scout can clear out that barbarian camp. But we'll see how it goes. Or I could research archery and uh, start work on that. Let's go ahead and um, let's move south around here. And yeah, this barbarian brute, because you can tell by the outline. So you see how units have uh, circular icons here. The... Um, Barbarian Brute, on the other hand, here has a shield. The shield means he's fortified. And when we start talking about the combat mechanics, you'll see why that matters. Move on to this hill. Don't see really anything particularly exciting. I use the Enter key on my keyboard to skip to the next turn here. And I'm, because I'm safe, I'm going to move to the south of the Barbarian and reveal this hill. Now, one thing you might remember is our scout has two units of movement, and rough terrain does not matter. But why did it take one full turn to move from here to here? It's flat land. Should I have had one whole movement left? And again, here, I moved from this tile to this tile. Yeah, it's a hill, but I'm a scout. Shouldn't I still have movement left? When you move while adjacent to an enemy unit, it ta it ends your turn. Or at least it uses an extra movement. I'm, I'm not sure which one it is. But because of this, it's called a zone of control mechanic, uh, moving next to enemy units eat more of your movement points. So... Ideally, you want to try to avoid doing that sort of thing. Oh, and even more pearls over here. Interesting. If, by any chance, Laventa does not grab King Solomon's mines, um, we might sneak out of city very, very quickly and just drop it on this hill or something like that. It's a little bit crazy. I'm not going to say that that's a great city spot. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when but I really like natural fall. wonders, and so should you. So, we've discovered animal husbandry. First question is, did that reveal any horses? In fact... It did. We've got horses here. We've got horses here. That's quite interesting. We also now have the technology to improve um, animal territory, basically cattle and horses, and also sheep, although I don't think we've met any sheep yet. Oh, there's some sheep over here, for example. So that might change what we're going to do. We're still going to finish the shrine. I think after the shrine, we will likely finish our worker, 
uh, especially since you can see here our next tile, although that will be in 25 turns, will be the horse tile. Um, the other thing we might want to do is research sailing. I'm not going to say that my, my tech path here has been optimal or not. It's just sort of trying to be an interesting tech path. Now, our button over here is telling us we need to adopt a policy. What's going on? Over here, we can see that we have now reached 15 of 15 culture. It's been 15 turns. We were getting one per turn. There we go. So that means we get to choose our first social policy. So let's go and hit that button. You can see here there are nine different social policies available or, or social policy groups. Now, a fair number of them are locked away until we get a higher technology. We need the classical era for patronage and aesthetics. We need the medieval era for commerce and exploration. And we need to have reached the Renaissance era for rationalism. Eras are determined once you get to certain technology levels. Let me show you. If we click on our tech tree over here, you can see our technology is divided into eras, ancient, classical, medieval. As soon as we get our very first technology in the Renaissance era, it doesn't matter which one it is, as soon as we've got one of these technologies, we will have reached the Renaissance era, which means we'd be able to, say, unlock rationalism. So, right now, there are four um, social policy groups or trees that we can pick from. Tradition, liberty, honor, and piety. And when you mouse over this, it sort of describes what they do. Piety is good for religious kind of things. You get more faith, for example. Honor makes you better at fighting, especially against barbarians early on. Liberty, they say, is best for civilizations which want rapid expansion. And why is that? Well, if we mouse over down here, we can see some of the actual perks you get from uh, liberty. First of all, adopting this group. Right away, if we click this button here, which means we have adopted Liberty, will give us one, one more culture in every city. Well, right now, uh, London is producing one culture. So by adopting this, London would produce a second culture. So we double our cultural output by picking Liberty. It also unlocks the ability to build the Pyramids Wonder. So certain world wonders require that you have certain social policies unlocked. If we ever get all the policies in the Liberty Tree, which means all these little things down here, then we will get a free great person of our choice. And we'll talk about great people a little bit later on. And then there's the actual thing. So we have one social policy pick. We can see right... Does it not just tell us the, the number that we can pick right now? I guess, I don't know. But we have one. We can pick a social policy. It will cost us that pick to adopt Liberty. Then the next time we earn enough culture, we'll then be able to unlock, say, the Republic which is plus one production in every city and plus 5% production in cities uh, when producing buildings. The big thing with Liberty is that it can give you collective rule, which gives you a free settler, not to mention cheaper settlers, which makes it easier to put out lots and lots of cities. You can also get citizenship, which gives you a free worker and also increases the rate that workers improve terrain. So that's those are the real draws to Liberty. Plus, there's some other stuff, which is fine. Um, but a lot of times that's what you're aiming for is that free settler, especially. Finally, we've got tradition. Now, tradition, it says, is the best for small empires. I don't think that's entirely accurate. What might be more accurate is that tradition is just sort of good all around. Whereas piety is like, okay, you're doing some specific religious -y kind of funny stuff. Honor is you're doing some very specific sort of early warfare funny stuff. Liberty is you're doing very rapid expansion funny stuff. Tradition is... This just works sort of all over the place. First of all, note that while Liberty gives you plus one culture in every city, which would bring us from one to two, Tradition gives you plus three culture in the capital. Okay, so it only gives it to you in one city, but this would quadruple our cultural output instead of just doubling it, which right now is pretty good. Also unlocks the ability to build the Hanging Gardens, which are pretty good. All, I mean, all wonders are fine. The other stuff you get in here is Legalism gives you a free culture building in your first four cities. That's the reason I have not built the monument while the monument is a great building and you want monuments everywhere i knew that i would go down the tradition tree this time around which would allow me to unlock legalism which would give me a free monument in my first four cities that includes cities i already have which means london would instantly get a monument but also if i create another city once i settle my second city uh, which i think will be called york i'm not sure but i think that's the default name that will automatically start off with a monument that's really handy so only after i get past four cities will i have to start building monuments at that point the other things you get here are just more food in your capital plus two food for free and an extra 10 percent growth which is handy a little bit more happiness and money. Uh, faster speed when building wonders is relatively handy. You don't want to go overboard on wonders necessarily, although on the low levels of difficulty, you can basically build all the wonders. High difficulty, it's very, very hard to do so. But aristocracy really helps with that. And oligarchy makes your cities slightly more defensive. And that's all good, solid stuff. More importantly, um, for finishing 
an entire policy tree. So once we get all of these, we'll also get the finisher, which is, so it says adopting all policies in the tradition tree will grant plus 15% growth, ooh, that's good, and a free aqueduct in your first four cities, that's also good, and lets you purchase great engineers with faith, which is amazing because in the late game, wonders are very, very time consuming to build. Great engineers allow you to basically instantly build great wonders. And so you can convert your faith into great wonders, which is a pretty good way to use uh, your faith, for example. But they all have good stuff. Anyway, this time around, I'm going to go ahead and grab tradition. So now you can see we're now producing four culture per turn. We need a total of 20 culture to get our next social policy. The first one was 15. The second one will be 20. Every policy you get makes the next one that much more expensive. Also, you can see on this tooltip, every city you own increases the cost by 10% as well. Um, but we've just quadrupled our, pol our uh, culture output, which means we'll get our next policy in five turns, which is great. Love it. Got to choose some new research. So what are we going to pick? Um, I'm kind of torn between grabbing sailing so we can improve the pearls and grabbing mining mostly so that we could work our way up to masonry. Uh, the problem with going that route is we don't actually unlock any new happiness buildings at all. You know what? I'm going to go sailing just so I can talk about the workboats. So let's go and do that. Our scout wants uh, some orders, so we're going to go ahead and cross the river, which normally would cost two movement, but does not for a scout, and then go into the forest just to reveal a little bit more territory. I'm going to move my uh, warrior west, try to clear up this spot, but also position us to maybe clear out the barbarian encampment. If we're really lucky, especially once Brussels becomes neutral with us again, they might give us a quest to go and clear out this barbarian encampment for influence. So we actually might want to leave that barbarian encampment until later on. Get some more wheat, a little bit of a lake, and not a whole lot of exciting stuff going on over here. Next turn. So now we're going to finish our shrine, which will start to produce cult uh, faith. We already had eight faith in the bank from meeting Laventa, and now we're earning one faith per turn. Once we get to 10 faith, we'll be able to found a pantheon. We'll actually be probably the first people to found a pantheon just because of that bonus faith there, unless the ancient ruins can sometimes give you faith, so someone might beat us there as well. But overall, we should be pretty okay. Um, I'd like to see the coast. I usually like to find the coasts. Just, I don't know, mostly a personal preference, I suppose. Oh, another city-state over there. Choose production. So our shrine finish. What are we going to build next? Notice we still don't have our free monument. We need one more level of tradition, but we're going to get that soon. So again, I'm not going to build the monument. I'm going to save myself seven turns there. A granary early on for more growth in London. That's not bad. We could finish our worker. Notice we can also build a caravan now. One of our technologies allowed us to build caravans. Caravans let you set up trade routes that give you money and science um, if you trade with... Um, other nations or city-states, or you can also have trade routes that are internal. So when I found another city, when I found York or whatever it will be founded, I can send a trade route back and forth between London and York, which will provide us with, um, which will send production, so hammers, to York. Or food, I could also do that, but you need special buildings and things. I'm not going to rush to a caravan. I do like the idea of uh, finishing our worker relatively soon. Uh, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and go right to a grand. We we're going to get London to grow a little bit faster. Again, I'm not going to say that this is the right build order. It's just an acceptable build order. There's a warrior bouncing around over here. We don't have to worry. Again, our warrior, if we remember here, where's our warrior? Over here. Warriors have a strength of 8. London has a strength of 11. So it's it would be very, very difficult for this warrior to attack London because it would take more damage than it would inflict. Furthermore, cities pr uh, have ranged attacks, which means we can hit this warrior. If, it if they declare war on us and they have a unit within two tiles of a city, the city can bombard the unit at range, which means the city itself takes no damage, but it inflicts damage. You need quite a few units to be able to take cities, and right now that's not going to be the case. Notice we are being prompted to found a pantheon. We reach 10 face, so we get to do that. So we are going to create a pantheon is not quite a religion. It's like a, a mini religion. It's, a, it's the margarine of religions. Um, but when we pick our pantheon, we get to pick a specific one, and there's a lot of different ones to choose from. There's a lot of them that give all kinds of really good stuff. Some of them are more mediocre. What do you pick? Well, here's the thing. If you want to play the religion game, oftentimes you will prioritize the ones that give you extra faith. Dance of the Aurora gives you faith from tundra tiles that don't have forests. Well, we don't have any tundra. Desert folklore gives us faith from desert tiles. Well, I don't have any desert. Technically, there's one desert tile up here. That's not really much. Also, desert tiles are really crap, so I'm happy we don't have much. Earth Mother is really good. Gives you faith for copper, iron, and salt. Well, we don't have... 
um, we don't have those resources. Um, so that's not going to be particularly helpful. Um, there's a few others that give faith. The other thing I like to get a lot are the ones that give you more culture. So we can get culture from pastures. Well, we're actually going to end up with two pastures in London eventually, here on the horses, here in the cattle. That's not bad. Things that give food are never bad. There's actually a really good one. I think, is it God of the Sea? Not God of the Sea? What's it called? No one took it already, did they? Oh, God of the Sea up here. I just missed it. Plus one production from fishing boats. Well, we're going to have three fishing boats. So that's plus three production. That's really, really, really good. But the one we absolutely want this time in London is Sacred Circles. Or Stone Circles, sorry. Which gives plus two faith on quarries. Quarries are what you build on stone. We're going to have two of these. And they give plus two faith. Some of these others were giving plus one faith. So we're going to get... If we take Stone Circles and we build quarries on both of these sites we are going to be able to get a crap ton of faith, and that's really good. So for us, it's a no-brainer, especially since I kind of would like to play the religious game and show that off. With that in mind, hey, why don't we choose to change what we're researching? We were researching a sailing so we could build boats so we can improve the pearls, and that's good, but now we know that we would like to get quarries up as soon as possible, so let's change it. We can do that. I can click over here, I can go to the technology tree, and I can change it. The progress I've made on sailing, so I've got 15 science put into sailing, that will stay there. I don't lose it. I would like to do masonry. Now, to do masonry, I need mining first. So I could click on mining, wait for mining to finish, then click on masonry. But I can also just click on masonry. And you can see it will queue things up. Let me give a better example. If I click on currency, it will queue up everything you need to do currency. It'll start with archery, then you can see the number here. It'll do wheel, then math mathematics, then currency. Some of these are a little bit uh, more convoluted. Engineering needs everything over here, for example. Um, so it will queue that up automatically. The other thing you can do is you can hold shift and queue up something different. So here it would research all the way up to engineering, and then it would start its way up to optics. In this case, what I'm going to do is click on masonry, so it will research mining, then it will research uh, masonry, which will give us the ability to build quarries. Hey, that's pretty good. In fact, if I knew that I was going to get a pantheon, I may have wanted to prioritize getting masonry sooner so that I could improve the stone, for example. Little things like that that you can think about to make things better. Let's go and see what's on the other side of this hill. Ah, there's, uh, there's Byzantium right over there. Um, it's possible that they might send a uh, settler over to the east to grab Mount Kalash. Although being this is only chiefed in difficulty, I suspect that we'll get the pick of the litter if we really want to. Um, so here, I do want to explore west, but why don't I just move south one first? I'll still have one movement left. Meet Buenos Aires, get some money. And then I can go and move onto the uh, forest tile at that point. There we go. So I get slightly more vision. I, I was able to see a few more tiles down here by doing that little kind of crooked move, which is handy. Another Pantheon has been founded. Or is that the one I founded? I guess that's the one I founded because there's no pop-ups. You will get alerted when people found Pantheons. And now that I've picked cir uh, stone circles or sacred circles, no one else can take that. Pantheons are unique. So no one else could take it. So if someone had gotten to that Pantheon first and had picked stone circles, I wouldn't have been able to do that. In which case, I'd probably have grabbed something and got of the sea or something. Um, let's go ahead and cross the river. You'll notice with my warrior, it takes all his movement to cross the river. As opposed to the scout, which didn't need to do that. Let's go ahead and move our scout down here. Ah, another... I forget we're playing on a small map. Normally the, uh, the wonders are not this close together. So Mount Fuji over here, first of all, gives us happiness because we discovered it. And also, you can see if you work this tile, it gives gold, culture, and faith. Not as much faith as Mount Kailash which gives six, but it gives a handful of things. It's actually a really, really nice uh, wonder over there. We can also adopt another policy. So I will take, I will now take legalism, which will give you, give us a monument in London for free. Notice our culture return is four. As soon as I hit this button, it'll go up to six because of course we got the monument in London. You can see on the right hand side, we got a monument, it's free. It also doesn't cost any maintenance. It's a free building. We didn't have to build it and there's no maintenance at all, which is pretty handy. Let's go ahead to the west and go and check out the southern coast over here. There's some copper over there. Copper is a luxury resource. Makes people happy. You'd have to build a mine on it before that happens. I'm going to move the uh, scout to the west because my worker will handle the southern end of this uh, I know, little peninsula over here. Move on to the copper. See what we can see. 
and hit next turn. Now, if you do get bored of moving your scouts around, one of the things you can do is you can automate them so that they'll explore on their own. But early on in the game, there's not that much to do anyway, so you may as well go ahead and, uh, and spend your time moving units around. So London continues to grow. We can, again, with the citizen management, we can see what tiles are being worked. They're working the stone, they're working the horses, and they're working more stone. And by default, what the, your governor is trying to do is he's trying to work tiles that produce the most amount of resources possible. And we can do this manually. I could decide to override it and say, listen, I really need some money right now. I would like you to work this tile. Well, there's two ways of doing that. First of all, I could ask the governor to put it on gold focus, in which case it will prioritize gold tiles like that. Or even if I left it on default focus, what I could do by clicking this tile here, I could lock this tile on. I could say, listen, regardless of what my focus is, I want you to work this tile no matter what. That being said, this is a bad idea because right now the most important thing is food. We want growth. So I don't actually want it to work this tile. I'd much rather it work this tile over here. Also, I don't value money quite as highly as food and production, for example. So how do I get it to work this tile again? Well, I could click off here and then force it to click there. You'll notice if I click this off, I'll actually have an unemployed citizen. Unemployed citizens are not working any tiles. They still produce one hammer, one production. It's not completely useless, but it's not great. The actual way to fix this, rather than manually assign it, is I can hit reset tiles. What this will do is it will remove all the locks and tell the governor to just use whatever focus I've assigned. So faith focus, or default focus is going to be perfectly fine right here. Managing your population is something you definitely will do on higher difficulties. You need to do it, but on low difficulties, you're perfectly fine just letting the governor do all the work for you. Oh, we found another uh, ancient ruin. That's wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and move right over here just to see if I can see. Oh, it's Constantinople, right, of course, and then move away. Starting to run out of uh, room on our continent here. We can start to see the outline of it. Actually, it might continue past Rio, I just realized. Hmm. Being on a low difficulty setting, we shouldn't have too much problem with competition. But not its mineral rights. So we've unlocked mining, we've got the ability to construct a mine or chop down a forest. We'll see exactly how those work as soon as we get a worker. Um, one thing that's nice, every AI opponent has their own personality. And some of them are really aggressive. Uh, luckily, uh, Pedro is not very aggressive, and I don't think that uh, Theodora is either. I'm not sure, but uh, they're not quite as likely to declare war. Against on the lower difficulty, you're going to be really, really safe. Um, but these are not terrible people to have around because they're less likely to be aggressive. Let's go and uh, check out these ancient ruins. Aha! Even we got a free technology. And wandering birds do not fall into the same traps or nets twice. This is probably the um, the best. Um, the best outcome of an ancient ruin is to get a free technology. So we've unlocked trapping, which gives us the ability to build camps, which you need for certain uh, resources on the map, and also the ability to build circuses. Circuses do require that you have an improved source of horses or ivory in, near the city, um, but they give you happiness, which is great. Um, and in fact, London, of course, will have horses. You can see that its borders have grown again, so it's got the horses in there. Let's move the scout down to here. Next turn. And we're basically done our exploration, so I think what I'm going to do... Ah, every now and again you get these pop-ups of the greatest civilizations. World's most fed people. So um, this has to do with how much extra food they have. And both Theodora and Pedro are making actual more extra food than we are. And why is that? Well, the reason is that um, Constantinople, for example, have both deer, which give uh, slightly more food, and cows. This cow tile is worth three food if we uh, open up the yields again three food we don't have any tiles that produce three food so that's why they're slightly ahead and what does rio have um oh rio has cows over here as well so that's why they're slightly more food rich now we don't get oh there's some stuff to talk about here soon we don't have access to cows yet soon at some point we will but we don't quite yet so here's a barbarian unit this barbarian camp has clearly popped out an extra barbarian who's wandering around getting himself into trouble uh, he's damaged. You can see that green bar over here showing that he's taken a little bit of damage. Um, now, that may have been a result of wandering into the, ter the Brussels territory. They may have been shot. Or they might have uh, gotten into a bit of a scuffle with the Byzantine or, um, or Brazilian scout. Those are all possibilities. If he steps into the territory of London, then London will be able to shoot this thing. 
depend it depends on your difficulty setting exactly how likely it is and how soon they will enter your borders i don't think we actually have to worry about it right now in any case he can't do anything to us he cannot take the city and we don't have a worker wandering around here that's at risk so we're going to be fine um i'm actually going to move my warrior up to start getting in position to clear out this camp so i'm going to click way over here it'll take us five turns to reach it but that'll be fine. We will have the scout join him at some point, but the scout can move a lot faster because he's not slowed down by rough terrain. So we're going to have the scout finish this little, well, scouting this area over here before joining the uh, the warrior. Meanwhile, we have finished the granary. It is definitely time for us to finish building our worker because we want to be able to improve the stone as soon as the masonry finishes. It's actually going to be quite convenient. Masonry finishes in seven turns, our worker finishes in eight. That's pretty good timing. And then right away we'll improve the stone so that we can get tons and tons of extra faith and found an actual proper religion. Yeah, the warrior, the uh, the brute's just going to move away. We're going to choose one more policy. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll end the video. Now I can at this point I could go and adopt a new um, a new policy group if I wanted to to get the unlock bonus or work way down. For example, if I did pick honor, it would give me a 33% combat bonus against barbarians. That's pretty good, plus some other stuff, including culture every time we kill a barbarian. Oh, well, that's pretty cool, too. It's probably not worth grabbing this by itself. I will say, though, that the warrior code is pretty nice. A permanent 15% bonus while building melee units, and most of your military units will be melee, as well as a free great general when you get there. Those are pretty sweet. Um, personally, I'm tempted to probably grab landed elite first. Uh, but we do know we're about to tag, uh, tangle with some barbarians a bit, so there's some value to be made there. Uh, because of the difficulty setting, and because of my confidence in my ability to handle the barbarians that are there right now, I'm not going to worry about honor. But if you want to grab those first two levels, it's pretty good. The rest is a little bit more questionable. But the first two are okay. So I'm going to grab land and elite because it's more food, which means our capital will grow that much faster, and population is good. Oh, the continent actually keeps going. That's really interesting. Also, I should check, how much money do I have? 229. That is not enough to buy another military unit, is it? I could. Oh, I could buy, uh, buy a warrior. I would rather not have a second warrior. I'd rather spend the money on an archer if we can get the archery tech. Maybe that's what we'll do after masonry. Anyway, I'm going to put a cut in this video. Thank you once again for watching. Hope you're enjoying this tutorial series. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, folks.